I'm from Nelson, BC. Uh, hi, I'm Sean Davron. I'm the Region 3 Youth Rep. My name is Danielle, and I was born and raised in Victoria, BC. Um, my Métis family is from Duck Lake, Saskatchewan. Okay, I'm Susan. Uh, I'm in from Surrey. Hi, my name is Kaya Horvat, and I'm from the Fraser Valley. Uh, hello, I'm Matthew Bryn. I'm from Golden Nearest Métis Society. I'm the youthful model for our Métis Nation to BC. I'm Dallas. I'm from the Kootenai region. I've been the MNBC youth representative for Region 4 for like since 2008. I'm also part of the Fraser Valley Métis Association where I'm the youth representative. When I am home, I attend meetings whenever I can. I attend AGMs like this when I'm, whenever I'm able to. I would like to, um, there's been some talk at the last meeting I was at about possibly becoming more involved as a women's rep. I have, over the past couple of years, tried to increase my involvement. Um, so I'm currently sitting as secretary um, for the Métis Nation of Greater Victoria. Uh, my specific community involvement with Métis Nation BC is uh, coming to events like this and participating in different youth forums um, such as the Unified the Aboriginal Youth Collective and the Métis Youth AGM. What is it cool about being a Métis youth? <laughs> so identity for me personally means having a connection to the community that I do have and to a broader community who I see at events like this. Getting involved in at least some small ways when I can is my way of sort of giving back and finding out what other opportunities there are for me to give back and to reach out to other youth. It's just a sense of belonging and uniqueness at the same time. As in the autumn it says we are forgotten, but I do not want anybody to be forgotten. I think it's really, really important. And I think that maybe some of the lyrics should be changed and say we're not forgotten, we are still here, we're still a person, we're still a nation. What the identity of being Haiti means to me is it's kind of more than just a culture, it's a way to get active in the community, it's kind of a good life experience, and it's something interesting to take knowledge from and pass on to others. What well, Métis identity to me is, um, it's not just saying that I'm AT, it's showing that I'm AT. Culture is an incredibly important part of identity. It's all wrapped up in that. Um, culture is how you maintain your identity. I love being able to be proud of who I am and what I do for the community and what I, what I am. I really like the history, kind of a history buff. I like you know, the stories of rebellions and, you know, battles and our history fits right in with that, our culture fits right in with that. Not our culture, but our history does and uh, I really like um, visiting Batash. Culture to me is really just a large connected web of people. People you can rely on, people you can ask for help and talk to about really whatever. As a Métis youth, I face a lot of um, ignorance. During high school, um, one of the challenges I think I most faced was um, it's actually less discrimination from, uh, it's more discrimination from other Aboriginal people in my school. One major challenge is uh, youth engagement in the community. A lot of it I found is, I mean, aside from the obvious, which is trying to get youth participation, but it's connectivity. They don't know where to look for the things. They don't know how to find information. There's a lot of people who don't know what uh, MNBC is, um, what Métis heritage is in general. Sometimes it can be hard to take that step 
and put yourself out there and go to that first community meeting and say hi my name is Danielle and I'm a Métis youth and sometimes just that step can be really challenging and um, thankfully the community that I'm a part of is very welcoming. Helping to bridge youth and elders. I would love to see more connectivity from the elders and from just the general Métis public to the youth because the youth need help too. It's not them just reaching out to others. I'm hoping that in the next couple of years I'll get to the point where I'm able to reach out more to do the supporting, to actually be going to schools, finding ways to help people engage. I would like the resources that we have as a Métis community to be publicized more, to be able to reach out to other people in the Métis communities so that they can know that they've had, they have help, especially with um, what happened through residential school. I think education is the most important thing for youth and not just because you actually need one to get any part-time job anywhere, but as like an entire society <laughs> as far as like trained to go to be a forester or a or a miner or something like that that didn't interest me at all and there's there's funding for that kind of stuff but not for I guess academia. The biggest thing on my radar right now is the Truth and Reconciliation Commission has just released its 94 recommendations um, to bring reconciliation to Canada. And what I really would like to see changed in that is to put a Métis perspective on it and have our youth voices heard, um, maybe create actions around those um, recommendations in justice, health, education, language and culture. I think there's a lot of opportunity right now to get our voices heard. Um, and when we gather in circles like this, we come up with ideas and actions on having our voices heard and having our Métis perspective. Um, variety of different issues. Uh, something that's important to me is also uh, to do with health. There's not a lot of support for people who are experiencing um, health problems, whether it's physical or mental, and I think that's something that really needs to be addressed. Probably that the Métis Masons get more recognition. I'd also love to see the Métis community be more be more active, be bigger in the society, be, be, more, be more known, more prominent. Identify uh, the different talents of all of our community members and focus our work together and maybe have some more workshops or education on how we can build programs that will serve Métis people better. There's not enough focus on the youth. Um, Earlier in my career as the regional youth rep, there was a lot of focus because youth was the big thing, but now they've kind of shifted their focus to trades and skills and stuff, and it's almost like the youth have been forgotten, and we can't be forgotten because we're, we're what's coming up. So AGMs that are more than just annual, see things that happen more frequently, see more funding going towards getting communities together and getting not just the youth and the elders together, though I think that's an incredibly crucial part of maintaining our culture, but also that middle ground, because I think that sometimes we create these divisions, so you have youth, you have elders, and then you have the adults in the middle, and there's not a lot of bridging of all these gaps, and I think collectively is where the strength comes. The Métis voice is really important to me, because we have been called the invisible people. I think that can't happen. We we can't be invisible. We have to we have to be visible. We're one of the Aboriginal groups. We need to be seen. We need to be heard, and that's why our voice is so important. I'd like to be fully recognized for who I am, not just as a person, but I think just as the whole nation itself should be recognized. <laughs>